The 2020 Virtual Webster Arts Fair is brought to you by these sponsors. This is the Webster Arts Fair, the virtual Webster Arts Fair, and we are making the rounds of artists' booths, which are really artist studios. And today we are with Court Anderson, a photographer. Hi, Court. Welcome. Hi. We are glad you're here. This is this would have been your third year at the Webster Arts Fair, right? That's right. Uh, tell me about your work. You're a photographer. You do a lot of film work. You do a lot of black and white work. I have a journalism background, and that's kind of carried over into my fine art work, which is kind of a mix of documentary and fine art. And I grew up in newspapers shooting black and white. And so that's what I know best, and that's just what I stayed with. Um, when I got into digital, I got into a digital printing system that uses uh, black and six shades of gray. It's a dedicated inkjet printer. Mm -hmm. And I stayed with digital for a while. And about two years ago at Cherry Creek, an artist friend whose husband used to be a photographer, they were cleaning out her studio. And she had, they had an old four by five oh, uh, studio camera. Those are fun. And do they you asked me if I, I don't think it. a lot of people yeah. know what a four by five looks like. Do you happen to have it there? I do, but it's all packed up. Okay. <laughs> I do have these. That's the negative from a four by five. That's the negative from a four by five. That's what's laid out on the table over there. And four by five means it's four by five inches. It is a lot of fun to work with, but you don't do anything in a hurry. If you want to sit up and get everything set up the way you want, you're looking at probably 45 minutes to an hour just to get one photograph. Now, four by film film doesn't four by five film doesn't come in a roll. You have to load those individually. Yes, those go into a holder, um, and you can put two sheets to a holder. And what you do is you slide the holder into the back of the camera, and there's a dark slide you pull out. You make your exposure. You put the dark slide back in. If you want to make a different exposure, you take that holder out. You flip it over and put it back in. So that's a slow process. It is, and it's it's very it's the exact opposite of what I do with digital. Mm -hmm. I shoot with digital; it's quick. Um, if I see something that catches my attention, I'll pull the camera up. Uh, some of the new work I'm doing, my porches, I rarely even get out of the car. I you know pull the camera up in the car, fire off two or three frames, and I'm gone. Talk about that kind of work. That's the work you're doing in rural areas. A lot of my work is in rural areas and always has been. Um, I wind up taking photographs and, and something catches my attention and then I realize, hey, I have two or three of these, maybe I ought to concentrate on just photographing that. Mm -hmm. um, kind of started that way with my churches. I've got a lot of rural churches. A lot of them are from down in the Mississippi Delta. Uh, I've also got some from other parts of the country. And the churches are, are the, the porches are kind of another thing I started doing. I shoot two different kinds of porches. Um, and actually I've got, that's what's in this book is portfolio that I put together for a show. And these are all my porches. And I shoot kind of them for two reasons. Because they have something interesting and I might be a little hard to see on this one. That's no, you can see it pretty clearly. That's a good angle. Yeah, there's a mannequin head on the railing of the porch. Mm -hmm. This one, I got really lucky. Uh, I saw this house and it had all these cat figurines and cat things hanging in the window. And as I stopped to photograph it, there was a cat next door that walked and walked right up to the front porch of this house, stopped and looked at me and then walked off. How oh, perfect. So in here, there's a, there's a cat. Um, another interesting one, you know, I shoot these because I find them interesting. The objects that are on the porch are interesting. 
uh, washers. There's a really great story about behind that one. Um, Christmas tree murals I found on a porch. I'm just going to flip through these, so I'm looking for one specific one. This one I shot. The other th reason I shoot porches is because, it's, to me, they're very graphic. And this is just very simple graphics to it. Um, yeah, good composition. I think that's about the only one that's, this is sort of the same way. Um, this was probably one of my first porch pictures before I really decided to start doing them. And it's one of the ones that led me into it. But my wife and I go to breakfast on Sunday mornings. And one Sunday morning, it was the Sunday after Thanksgiving a couple of years ago. I drive by this house. It's just up the road from me. And next to this little front porch is a pumpkin. And yeah. the Christmas lights are halfway up and dangling down right over the pumpkin. And I thought it was a great change of seasons going from Thanksgiving to Christmas. And I, you know, went home, got the camera, went back, photographed it, came home. And as I was looking at it on the computer, I didn't even notice it at the time. There's a cat sitting on the front porch. <laughs> what do you think uh, your collectors see in your work? What, what elements uh, do they find compelling? Um, it strikes, the image strikes a personal note with them for some reason. Um, I had a lady come in and I have a, one of my porches, let's see if I can find it real quick. That's the last one, this one. Oh yeah, that's a pretty one little one of yours. It's just the classic all American porch. It's got a porch swing. It's got a rocker, American flag. It's got a welcome mat. You know, it just has everything that you expect on kind of a rural porch. Mm -hmm. And she asked me where I photographed it. She said, that is my grandmother's front porch. No kidding. It was, That's great. It's not, it's not I know her porch. Mean. My grandmother's front porch looked just like that. It, it, so, it, it, yeah. It's those kind of connections that people see. Sure. How long have you been doing fairs? Um, 11 years now. So what compels you to do a fair rather than work in a gallery? Um, I love meeting the people. Um, it's extremely difficult to get into galleries, extremely. Um, and that's not something I have pursued. It was kind of on my radar to start pursuing this year until everything went out the window. <laughs> so has uh, has COVID-19 and the pandemic and the lockdown, now you're not part of the country that's not locked down as some of the other cities, is that right? Right. Yeah, so has this is this gonna change your work at all or is it having, any influence on your work? There are a lot of photographers that are doing projects, you know, because they're stuck at home. Sure. I have a, I have a part-time job. That's one of the reasons I'm getting by right now. I work for Target and I unload trucks, so I'm considered essential. So I'm one of the lucky people that gets to go to work right now. Um, and the whole lockdown and loss of shows and the income just, Personally, it's had a big impact. I haven't picked up my camera in probably a month. Um, I could still go out and do porches real easy. Um, you know, I don't have to get out of the car. I don't have to interact with other people. Um, so I could, I have the time to go do some day trips and I'm going to start hopefully working on those and doing some of those again. You have a favorite art fair story? Um, yeah, from, from yours, from your show, the first year I did it, and it's kind of carried out, carried on to be a tradition. Um, I think you, I put me next to another, you put me next to another photographer that I know <laughs> who is about as crazy as I am. And during the show, for those of you that don't know, the shows bring around snacks. And one of the things you had was Cheez-Its. And I love Cheez-Its. And... Jim Parker, who is next door, who goes by Parker, um, grabbed the last bag of Cheez-Its. So we kind of had this ongoing thing. And so that's why there's a box of Cheez-Its over here. And that's carried over into other shows as well. Um, I've shown up at, uh, at other shows with him, and he came in to find an industrial-sized box of Cheez-Its sitting in his booth space. <laughs> Yeah, I had a couple of things. I had a couple of things planned for this year that I, I, I'm not going to let you know, but 
Yeah, good, because we'll do them next year. Well, I yeah. say that's a good illustration of the camaraderie between artists and among artists. I think a lot of people don't realize that um, we see each other on all the, a lot of the shows. Artists see each other from from week to week or sometimes from month to month. And uh, there's a little community of artists. It's not just people popping in and out of towns. So that's that was a good example. One of the other things I like to do is I get these guys, the little finger puppets. I always carry a couple bags with me. And so if you're a neighbor at my art show, you're going to get one of these. Excellent. So, excellent. you know, neighbors and friends that I see at art shows, I go around and hand these out. Um, I have a friend, I can't remember his name right now. He's a ceramic artist and he does... John, I can't remember his last name, but he does spaceships, ceramic spaceships and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I drew up a few of those off in his booth and it, it really went with his work. Excellent. Excellent. Anything else you want us to know about your work? Even though I shoot with digital, you know, I, I have 25 years of film background and I treat my digital the same way I treat film. And I treat it the same way that I treated journalism. Um, when I shoot something, even though it's digital and it goes through Photoshop, I don't add things. I don't think take things away. I don't digitally enhance things. I really don't do anything that I couldn't do in the darkroom. Um, I always have. I have a really good friend who's a commercial photographer in Kansas City, and we always have these debates about. Well, you should have put this in there. You should have put that in there. No, that's not the way I shoot. That's the way you shoot, not the way I shoot. So. Great visiting with you, and thanks for inviting us into your studio. Well, thank you. Bye. Bye.